Hi, I'm Mike Coyle, and you're watching Inside Exploration. Today, I'm here with Mike Bandrowski, who is the President, CEO, and Director of Big Ridge Gold Corp., which can be found on the TSX Venture under BRAU. Mike, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Mike. So I think it's super important for people to understand not just the project, but also who they're investing in, who's managing the company. So before we get into Hope Brook or the company itself, I'd like to get you to give us a little bit of an overview of who is Mike Bandrowski? What's your working experience? Sure. I'm um, happy to, uh, to talk about it. Um, you know, I've spent the better part of the last 20 years on Bay Street, uh, working on the South side as a research analyst uh, and in investment banking. I covered base metals and precious metals during that time. In uh, 2019, I left and went to do my own thing and was helping companies you know, uh, acquire assets, sell assets. And um, I ended up uh, putting together a couple of companies during that time. Uh, the final one that um, came together was actually Alto Ventures, the predecessor to Big Ridge Gold. We announced a business combination with Empress Resources, which was another uh, TSXV listed company. We put the two companies together. We uh, kept the gold, the gold assets. I took over that, uh, that side of the business and we spun out a, 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 or dividended out a royalty company called Empress Royalties to the shareholders. Um, so that's how I got involved with the company. We ended up rolling back the stock, recapitalizing it and changing the name to Big Ridge Gold. Um, about a year later, we, uh, we announced that uh, we had closed a transaction, um, an earn-in transaction uh, with First Mining Gold uh, on the Hopper Gold, uh, Hopper Gold asset. And that's how the whole company came together. In addition to myself, I mean, we've, we've got a fantastic uh, board of directors and management team. Um, most of the people were new additions since, um, since the name change of the company, which was in uh, uh, July of 2020. Uh, we've got Bill, um, Bill Williams, that um, uh, he's Boston-based, uh, ran Detour Gold, um, Orvana Minerals. He's permitted mines, built mines, and operated them. Uh, Nick Tintor, uh, also on our board, who's got um, uh, a lot of uh, junior mining experience and also uh, put into production a mine in Newfoundland, uh, which is a great resource to have, obviously, uh, given the fact that they're working there. Um, Christina Bates came on this year. Uh, she's um, chairing our audit committee. Christina's got um, a ton of experience in the capital markets. And, uh, and she's a CPA as well. Uh, Rick Mazur, who was, um, uh, he was involved with Alto Ventures, the predecessor, and he remains uh, the last board member from uh, the old company. And lastly, James Maxwell, who is the, um, the representative for First Mining. He came on in January of this year. Um, he's the uh, VPX at First Mining and obviously a great addition to have on uh, on our team, given the fact that we're, uh, we're exploring uh, on one of their assets. The last two people that I'd like to highlight would be uh, Bill McGinty, who's our VP of Exploration, uh, and Jim Kirk, who's our CFO that came on from uh, uh, Marathon Gold. So he's got a lot of experience in, in Newfoundland as well. Awesome. Okay, so why don't you give us a little bit of an overview of the Hope Brook Gold Project? This is a past producing operation by my understanding. So why don't you give us a little bit of the history and where you're at today? No, you're absolutely correct. The mine produced from 1987 to 1997. Um, it produced about 750,000 ounces during the 10 year period, uh, primarily from an underground. It, there was a small open pit operation there. Um, metallurgical recoveries during that period average are ranged between 86 and 92 percent. Um, the mine, uh, you know, or not the mine, but the company, uh, Royal Oak went bankrupt uh, in 97. The mine was reclaimed by the Newfoundland government and went back to them. Um, and it's gone through a few different iterations since then. Um, most recently, um, I guess from 2012 to 2015, Coastal Gold ran it. Uh, Coastal, Coastal Gold was run by um, Bill Pearson, 
who is on our advisory team. It was then taken out by First Mining, and then we acquired it from First Mining uh, and closed that transaction on June 8th of 2021. So you've recently put out some results from your phase one of drilling from 2021. Uh, talk to us about the last couple of press releases, where you're drilling and what you're seeing in, in the core so far. Sure. So uh, we took, the, took over the project last year. Like I said, we closed June 8th. Um, it took us a couple months to start building up a team and get ready to uh, get the camp ready for a drill program. It was not winterized. So we spent a few months doing that, um, getting our permits, exploration permits in place, septic, so on and so forth. And on November 3rd of 2021, we announced um, our, the start, the commencement of our phase one drill program, which is 25,000 meters. Um, we drilled up until mid-December and, uh, and then everyone went home for the break, came back and we were back at it in, in early January. So as far as our press releases go, we announced uh, about a dozen holes uh, early April, April 5th of this year. And um, those first few holes were from uh, that drilling that took place in, uh, in November and December. And, uh, and then on the 26th of, uh, of April, we announced um, our second set of uh, drill results. It was uh, three of the holes were from 2021 drilling. And then the, the rest of those, uh, the other seven are from, um, from 2022. Uh, so the program's 25,000 meters. We are just under 50% done, uh, but we've only reported, you know, um, a, a fraction of the drilling. There's uh, obviously a lot to be done and, and a long way to go. Uh, we think that we'll wrap up the drill program in around the August timeline, and we should be, you know, continually um, press releasing drill results here probably through September, October of 2022. Um, so from a results standpoint, uh, we've got off to a great start. Um, you know, the um, uh, initial drilling um, was, you know, the first few holes were primarily uh, confirmation drilling, but since then we've started to step out. We're starting to fill in gaps in the resource shell. So it's, um, it's been a fantastic start for us right now. And uh, if we continue to do so, um, it's, uh, it'll culminate in a, in a fantastic uh, resource update, which we hope to get started on late this year and, and get out to the market in, um, in 2023. Uh, there's a few key things to that. Uh, one is obviously the drilling that we're doing right now, but um, right now we have about 950,000 ounces in the ind indicated and in inferred categories in our resource that was, uh, put together in 2012 by Coastal Gold. Uh, the resource is based on, um, on a US $1,200 gold price. Um, so sig significantly lower than where the gold price is today uh, in a three gram cutoff. So uh, with our drilling, uh, if we continue to have success here um, and then uh, bringing in uh, you know, more meaningful metal prices, uh, it should result in a, in a fantastic resource um, upgrade for us in, uh, in 2023. And then the last thing that I would highlight from our drilling so far is that uh, we have, um, we've started to press release copper grades in our, um, in our assay results. Um, you know, the, the previous resource estimates that were put out to the market um, did not include um, a copper resource. Um, but historic production during 87 to 97, there was a, 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 a copper ride, uh, sorry, a copper byproduct produced. So we know it's there. Um, we're starting to, um, to make note of it and, uh, and, and release those assay results. And it'll be part of our updated resource estimate as well. So as part of your 2022 exploration campaign, is your main focus going to be to the southwest extension of the open pit? Uh, you know what, we've got um, uh, several areas that we're testing. The, the first two press releases that uh, have gone out to the market focused on uh, shallower drilling, mm -hmm. uh, pulling the uh, old resource shell to the southwest. And, um, it, you know, we haven't released all those results yet. Uh, they will uh, continue to come out as we get them from the assay lab. 
Um, but from there, we're going to start drilling, um, uh, trying to pull together the, the main zone and the 240 zone. So um, it'll, um, that'll kind of be our second phase. And then the third phase will be testing what we call the Northeast extension. Uh, and it looks to be an offset to the old mine zone. So there's three key areas that make up this 25,000 meter drill program. Um, you know, we're not, unfortunately, um, with the meterage and, and um, uh, the way this program is designed right now, it's not going to be able to test everything. I mean, we know the deposits open in, in uh, pretty much every direction. So uh, there's going to be a phase two, we think. Uh, and hopefully more beyond that. But uh, those are the three key areas that we're focusing on right now. So I think you'll see in the next few press releases us wrap up that shallower drilling to the Southwest, and then we'll start putting out deeper drilling between uh, the mine zone and the 240 zone. And then the, the last bit will be on the, uh, the Northeast extension. I'm looking forward to that. Now, I've also noted that you have a few satellite uh, deposits or uh, opportunities on the property. Is there anything that you're going to have your exploration team going out and doing some ground truthing this year a little bit? Yeah, we've got a lot of smoke, that's for sure. Um, a few of the targets had some drilling done in the early 80s um, mm -hmm. by Royal Oak and by uh, another company, I think, uh, called Dolphin Exploration. But um, there are, uh, you know, there's more than that. There's probably uh, seven to nine uh, peripheral targets that need work uh, to identify which ones, um, you know, we need to rank them, see what ones are, uh, are most prospective and then uh, go after them. Some initial work's been done, um, but uh, it's early. Um, you know, we haven't even ranked those targets yet, but uh, I think we're gonna be working um, on those uh, a little bit more this summer and prioritizing them and then hopefully um, uh, or potentially bringing in uh, maybe a smaller more nimble drill rig to test some of those targets uh, before the year is out. Okay so how are your finances? How do the company's books look for the 2022 exploration campaign? You know the company is in good shape. Um, after the last quarter we had about seven million in cash. We had um, about 1.2, 1.3 million dollars in marketable securities. And then uh, we've got another $4 million of in the money warrants. So mm -hmm. we're in good shape right now. We're, um, you know, we'll, we'll e uh, easily get through our, uh, our phase one drill program, no problem before um, we need to look at the market again. So, um, you know, we've got the news flow on our side right now. And if we continue to put out good drill results, um, uh, we're, in, we're in great shape to do that and, and not dilute the company right now. So a question that I ask everybody, Mike, is why Big Ridge? Why now? This is an opportunity for you to kind of give a pitch to investors as to why this is a good opportunity for them to get involved with Big Ridge Gold. Well, I think there's, um, you know, uh, we, we touched on a, on a few of these things uh, over the last few minutes, but one is uh, I've got a, a fantastic board and management team that I'm working with. Um, you know, the, uh, these uh, the, this team has put mines into production. They permitted mines. Um, they made discoveries. They've done it all. So I've got a great team in place. Um, you know, we just touched on it. I've got a great treasury as well right now. Mm -hmm. um, and the asset itself is um, something that, you know, no one's done any work on in nearly a decade. Um, it's, it was kind of inventoried uh, after um, Coastal was taken out. The deposit's wide open. It's uh, in a fantastic part of the world. We're able to work there. The government's great. The people are great. Um, so I think between all of those, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a fantastic opportunity. And then from an evaluation standpoint, you know, we're trading, you know, well below um, just uh, early stage explore codes in Newfoundland. So you know, we're starting to get the story out there. Uh, there's a long way to go. But it's a it's a fantastic opportunity to uh, to get involved in the stock right now and uh, and participate in the next um, you know 13 14 thousand meters of uh, of exploration work uh, and hopefully a lot more beyond that. Well, Mike, thanks for taking the time to join us today. I really appreciate the insight on the project. I can't wait to get back out to Newfoundland to see the project again. I don't feel like I spent nearly enough time there. 
But again, looking forward to your upcoming drill results. If you're interested in investing in Big Ridge Gold, you can find the company on the TSX Venture under BRAU. This is Mike Bandrowski, the President, Director, and CEO of the company. I'm your host, Mike Coyle. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Mike. It was great to be here.